It's true, there was really no fight. I, I just didn't want him to be associated with the rebels. Now, can we stop this farce and get to the truth about the matter? Fine, I'll tell you what really happened. There are certain things here about lying to a police officer. Aliens, take her away. Continue. I asked him what was going on. He told me he was meeting with an old colleague to discuss a new job. A new job? I knew he was having money problems. Our family has been seeing better days. I can tell that. He said this job would give him enough money to repair the mansion. Do you remember how this person looked? I'm not sure. He was a bit short and wearing a black hood. But for him to be a rebel? That's... That's just... I mean, he's wearing a hood. How many people have you seen so far in this game that are wearing hoods? This is noir style, damn it. It's trench coats or nothing. To be working with criminals, I just can't believe he would do that. Well, there is a saying. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Of course, we at the Bureau do not condone this kind of behavior. I'm sorry, I wish I knew more. Thank you for your time. Don't worry, we won't hold your hesitance against you. We know how distraught you must be. I mean, it wasn't hesitant, she lied, whatever. I'm so sorry, I hope I, help, I, hope I helped your investigation, Tatty. Come on, let's go, there's nothing left to be, d there's nothing left to do here. You could just sell the house and live off that, it's fine. Blue and I leave Lynn, we make our way back through the empty halls until we are once again outside and heading towards the car. The enforcers still milling around, though some of them have left. Fantastic. We know that Mr. Grange was desperate for money, for, but we still have no idea what he was trying to sell. Wrong. There's a piece of evidence that tells us exactly what he was doing. By all means, don't hold me in the dark. You mean... Shredded calculations. Bloody paperweight. Well, he wasn't selling paperweights, was he? And it is the suspicious ledger. Well, like, it, it is. Uh, okay, well, it's uh, I, what I meant actually was uh, this, the shredded calculations. I said the shredded. We can't go back and change our option. Oh, I forgot. Ah, oh, they didn't let you do that in Icebound either. Fuck, I forgot about that. Whatever, sorry, but I'm stumped. Remember those shredded papers? What if he was doing right in. F what if he was doing. Uh, what if what he was doing was right in front of us the whole time? Um, so he was making all that money doing calculations? Bingo. I don't understand what potential criminal would need such a thing. Bombs? I mean, that's just a, that's just a start. Then you aren't thinking hard enough. What are rebels usually interested in? Technology. Why do you... Oh. All ancient tech has a computer inside. And computers are locked by passwords. Oh. Yeah, that's what I meant. Not bombs. Definitely meant... Look, I'm right, okay? You don't need to know anything else. Then you think they hired Grange to... He'd probably have the ability to decrypt some of the more advanced codes that your run-of-the-mill rebel would have no idea what to do with. What if the person he was dealing with was Zala or one of the cell members? You took the words right out of my mouth. I guess great minds think like, let's not... Ah, you know... I think you've clearly been better than me so far. She's been very active in her search for ancient technology in the past few months, but if they were using him for his skills, why kill him? Maybe he stopped being useful. Maybe he knew too much. Strange, Zala doesn't strike me as the type of person to just off someone without reason. Oh yeah, a criminal doesn't seem like the... A criminal on the run against the government doesn't seem like someone who'd do something nefarious. Truly, Violet, you're too clever for me. Astound me with more words. Then again, the rebels aren't exactly the sanest bunch. Well, there's also the possibility that he wanted out, but what would make him panic so much that he had to be kept quiet? I'm not sure I want to know. Good, okay, so we're back to him being three feet tall. We arrive back at the car we both get in, and Blue pulls the car away from Mr. Grange's mansion. As we drive away, I wonder what could have been so important and so terrible that Mr. Grange had to be silenced permanently. It was such a bold move for the rebels. I glance sideways at Blue, and I can tell he's lost in his own stream of thoughts. Really? He looks like he's checking out just a burger or something. He does not look like he's thinking about too much. What is he thinking about? I can read his emotions, but I don't know what's going on in his mind. Not really. 
I wonder what he actually thinks about Grange's secret theory. I'm sure he has one. You don't get to be a senior agent without having an active investigative mind. Though he tries very hard to hide his, and I'm not sure why. Maybe one day I'll know him well enough to know what he's thinking about in situations like this. I just told you it's a burger! It's a burger or like boobies. He is not thinking about anything else. Look at his face. It's an odd thought. Another odd thought. What does he think about me? That was a, that was a sudden transition, wasn't it? Late morning is tickling... Ticking, even. If late morning would tickle us, we'd all be very happy and annoyed in the morning. Is ticking swiftly towards early afternoon. Blue and I decide to head to the Sector 2 precinct to see if we can get some more information on Grange. A stout, sandy coloured building. I mean, it's black and white. I, I'm gonna have to take your word for that. Sandy coloured building near the centre of the dome. It is the hub for enforcer activity. I tend to avoid places like this when I can. Something about the faceless masses of the enforcers causes an emotional reaction in me. I haven't pinned it down exactly, nor fear or annoyance, perhaps anxiety. Perhaps just being freaked the fuck out. Sometimes it's unavoidable, like today. We need to see if we can find a connection between Grange and Zala or her flying monkeys. The fastest way to do that is through Central's files. Blue pulls up the car in front of the Central, and I feel, rather than see, a figure standing off to the side. I follow my mind with my eyes and see her carefully lounging against a wall in a dark passage between one of the two surrounding buildings. <sighs> Is she standing there with a dossier on like, I don't know, how to fix orange juice in the stocks market? Mm. It's Zala! No wait, there's hostility, but it's different, more focused. Oh lord, not today. What, not excited to see your girlfriend? I didn't want to see her ever again. <laughs> It's Sala! The criminal mastermind is outside of the police! Oh, no, wait, it's just Nick's girlfriend. <laughs> Love the switch there. The intensity of his reaction is surprising. We both get out of the car. I, I didn't realise... Don't worry about it, Ace. Let's just go inside before she notices us. We started walking towards the steps of Central, but suddenly... She can phase in and out. That. Also, I'm not gonna say slightly degrading for the police officers, but who the fuck came out with this uniform? Really? Like... <laughs> you know what? We don't need them, but let's put cups here, just in case. <laughs> Let, let's not accentuate anything in particular, hey? Blue, I always knew you were lazy, but I never thought you were blind, too. <laughs> Man. I wonder if, like, there are so many colours that you do have to get down to, like, car paint colours, you know? Oh look, here comes British Racing Green! <laughs> Over the hill! Uh, not that I blame you, if I had this newbie as my partner, I probably wouldn't have the stones to face any of my fellow agents either! The Distorter, okay. Sure? Well, I would have the stones, but you certainly wouldn't. Is she housebroken yet? Did we accidentally skip a line? We did. No, we didn't. That's the first thing she says. Excuse me. Beg pardon. Was my disdain not strong enough for you? I thought you could read people's minds. Not quite. I... Oh, right. You can't even do that, can you? I don't understand why the Bureau thinks you're special. As far as I'm concerned, you're useless. What's an Esper going to do? Feel me to death? No, but find out when you're like... I'm just going to assume that she's probably some sort of killer. Stealth. There you go. That's why. She doesn't understand the more clever parts of police work. Red, leave her alone. Defending your puppy, Blue? If I were you, I'd miss having a partner with some real power, not some parlor trick. Violet is powerful enough, thank you very much. Why are you here, Red? I have something that might interest you, and what, pray tell, would that be? Just a few photos I don't need. If you're trying to get back into my good graces, it won't work, but hey, thanks for the offer. Even if I couldn't feel the embarrassment and anger rock Red's mind, I would be able to see it on her face. <laughs> she looks really angry. Hang on, she doesn't look necessarily angry, she's actually reaching for her sword. That is a bad sign. Her snide grin turns into a snarl, twisting the sides of her mouth. While her cheeks colour ever so slightly, defensively she crosses her arms over her chest. Fool, if I meant to flaunt my body, it would not be in front of her. So you're saying if I weren't here, this would be a different story. Outside a police station. Shameless! 
Besides, I'm sure you remember it quite well already. Just hand it over. Red holds the pictures out to Blue, twitching back when he reaches out to grab them, taunting him before placing them into his hands. Are these... Grange? How the hell did you get these? That's none of your beeswax. I'm going to assume illegally stealing. That's bull. You randomly getting on your, your hands on evidence pertaining to my investigation is very much my concern. Too bad life can be so disappointing, can't it? I'm not in the mood for this beating around the bush crap. I have my ways, you should know that by now. Forget it, just tell me who is who this is with Grange in the photo. Who's the rebel? How should I know? What do you think I am, psychic? Very funny, are you telling me that you didn't get them analysed? Doing the dirty work just isn't my style. I leave that for the puppies and the lazy old softies, right. Okay, I now see why you think we're useless. It makes sense. I didn't ask for your help, Red. I could never pass up the opportunity to make you look bad. No, you never could, could you? You're welcome. Stay out of my way, Red. Come on, Violet, we have work to do. See you the next time I do your job. Okay, so we have a few like new additions to the dossier, right? So we can check that out. Individuals. Red. This is just for people who want to read it. Uh, we definitely didn't do this. She's quick to panic. She has trouble hiding her real emotions. And then that's all we know there. Do we find anything out here? Probably not. See, because last time there was definitely one of those which had like a scroll that I forgot to scroll. So I think someone mentioned that they were trying to read it and I accidentally skipped past it. Large particular kinetic barrier mind. Probably there is like how it works. I think someone theorized that only like organic material, no, non-organic material could pass. I don't know. <laughs> that anything that wasn't organic couldn't pass through, but that didn't make much sense because then how would we get in? And if it was the other way around, I've screwed this up completely, haven't I? If organic material couldn't get in, then how would we get in? And if non-organic material couldn't get in, how could you ever repair anything? You know, unless it was self-sufficient, unless it was Switzerland. Ugh. As we enter the precinct building, I feel like Red is still somewhere nearby, her eyes burning into the back of my head. Don't flatter yourself. She's unpleasant. <laughs> yep, that's Red. Come on, let's go find the captain. Say that out loud when she's here. The waves of hostility that are rolling off of her are incredible. But at least she knows at least I know she isn't corrupt. I'd hate to get on the bad side of someone like her. <sighs> that sounds like foreshadowing. I wonder why she was so dismissive towards me. Is she usually this way, or was she trying to throw me off? She has to be hiding something. Blue's eyes widen, his face is going pale for some reason. What did you say? Oh sorry, just thinking aloud again. Well, if you don't think it's important, I won't ask further. He thinks he has something as well. Okay, look, I can sort of understand why you're not cracking any of the cases here. Are you playing darts with nails into, like, empty pieces of paper? No wonder you're not. Oh, look, this is a... <gasps> and this is how my bells felt at the latest festival after those mushrooms. Someone did a nice little picture of the city towers as well. We trek through the halls of the precinct, which are buzzing with the movement and chatter of enforcers. It smells like a mixture of sweat and some unidentifiable metallic odour, which could be guns or blood, I don't care to know which. When the crowd catches sight of me and Blue, it parts in front of us and quiets perceptibly. The few enforcers I catch staring at me quickly look away from my violet eyes. Something about our eye colour makes people a bit uneasy, even enforcers. Really? What, are you gonna fucking shoot lasers at me? Why? The... <sighs> Whatever. At the end of the hallway, we step into a large utilitarian office and are stopped by an enforcer behind a grey metal desk. Um, what is your business here? Agents Blue and Violet from the Bureau. We're here to see Captain Wells. Very well, one moment, please. The enforcer walks quickly back into a back room. I read that wrong. While Blue and I are left standing in the front office, I glance around the room. Don't be too nosy. You don't want these people to catch you whilst you're snooping around. It always looks weird. The walls are a sickly yellow, like skin that has not seen the sun for far too long. There are lines of portraits on the wall on either side of us. Our, one side is labelled Our Fallen Heroes and has rows and rows of small portraits of Hask Mars half must enforcers. That's a bit dark. You can't keep files somewhere for that, can you? 
The opposite wall has far fewer portraits, but their larger and bear the banner are fearless leaders. Must be the former captains of the enforcers. What, the ones who have died or the ones who have retired? Let's go with retired, that sounds nicer. I look all the way to the right, right up to the current captain. The portrait is of a large man, his shoulders, okay, so they're current ones, gotcha. His shoulders square and hunched as though he's trying to bend over something to fit inside the frame. The enforcer reappears and gestures for us to follow him. Him? Man, it's like lipstick and a ponytail from here, whatever. We head into the back and enter a small cluttered office. Okay, you look quite big. Soviet Russia rings true. <laughs> look, sir, I'm not saying you don't, but you ever visited a country called Arstotska? I think you'd fit right in. The man from the last portrait is seated behind a desk that looks ridiculous next to his huge frame. He stands as we enter. These are the agents, sir. Thank you, Enforcer. <laughs> you'd know if they were lying as well. Like agents when they say their name. Hi, I'm Agent Brown, but you have blonde hair. Bollocks, you know? Yeah. His voice is gruff and cuts through the room like a bark. The enforcer leaves the room. What's the matter, Blue? Got bored of your old partner? With all due respect, sir. Ah, just yanking your chain. I know exactly why you left. <laughs> okay, so he's more like an American grrr sort of general. Yeah, sure you do. So, who's the new girl? Violet, I'm guessing. The name's Harold G. Wells, but that's Captain Wells to you. Who introduces their initial? Hi, my name is Christopher P. Tenarium. <laughs> no. The pleasure is all mine. You training her, Blue? Trying, Captain. Well, it's a busy day. What's this all about? Sir, we're looking into the Grange murder. Yeah, heard about that. What's the Bureau want with Grange? Not quite sure yet. That's what we're looking into. We were hoping you'd be able to help us out. Hmm. Any files you might have on Grange? Also, we just got to look some photos. We just got some photos. Maybe you should... Have your analysts take a look. We haven't had a chance to run by them by the bureaus, guys. Blue hands the photos to the Wells. Wells. To the Wells. Two Wells. Wells stares at them for a moment and shouts across the office Enforcer! I jump slightly at the noise and Blue's hand closes lightly on my wrist, his fingers pushing gently into my skin. The Enforcer re enters the room. Take these photos down for anal analysis. Tell them I need the results five minutes ago. Five minutes. They know that's probably going to be a lie. This looks like a well run. I say that it doesn't look like a well run organization as well at all, does it? There's shit just plastered everywhere. Yes, sir. The enforcer leaves the room with the, uh, with the photos, and Blue's hand lets go of my wrist and moves away. I can still feel the ghost of his fingers on my flesh. They'll come up with something in a few minutes. Thank you. We appreciate the assistance. What are you thinking? Uh, I mean, who do you think that is in the photo with Grange? None of your beeswax? That's a terrible thing to say! That is almost certainly not the one we're going for. The other two, I'm unsure of. Well, let you guys decide. What, what one do you want me to say? I'm not at liberty to say. We might have an idea. None of your beeswax. Decide and we'll do that next episode.